In our artwork today, what we're going to be doing is if putting down a very colorful background using some gouache paint on a layout pad and then effectively doing our, um, putting our muse on top of that and then filling the line work of the muse in with black ink. So we're going to have effectively a black sketch on a super colorful background, all those colors that we're going to be doing in the gouache. So the reason for the four step process is it just gives you a little bit more control in the different stages of the artwork. So what I find I like to do is ultimately I do a sketch. Well, let's start here. Print out the muse. So there's Emma with um, a grid that I've drawn over it and I've printed it out in black and white so that I can see the various tonal values. And then taking the same measurements of the grid on a separate piece of paper, I've then gone and drawn her out very angular and just really kind of just mapped out certain areas where I know more intense kind of tonal values are going to be. Then once our background is ready, the gouache bit, I take some good old fashioned carbon paper, right? And I put that over the image, uh, sorry, put that over the background, the color and put the sketch on top and then I'm going to trace that over. So the reason why I've already done this sketch, I've done this part of it, was really just to kind of save a little bit of time and you file it away and you can pull it out again and use it as many times as you want by just simply transferring the sketch onto whatever it is that you're going to be um, experimenting with just using, like I say, this good old fashioned carbon paper. This is effectively the first stage and then ultimately the second last stage of our process. So coming back to our little four step thing. So you do your sketch of the muse. You then we're going to go and um, then we do all the background colors using the gouache, transfer the sketch using the carbon paper. And then once that's all done, then we go in with some black pen and a little bit of uh, black paint and then do all the lovely inking detail. And then you'll have your finished product. Okay, so I think let's get cracking. So here I've got a um, very standard A4, uh, fairly, it's about a 240 GSM um, pad here. Nothing special about it. There's no particular, um, there's no major cost points in this one. This is a cheap old layout pad uh, with thicker stock that can be used for multimedia artwork. So you can play around with this kind of paper as long as it's on the 240 GSM range and above. It's great for kind of playing around with acrylic, with watercolor, with gouache, even just sketching. So an inexpensive pad that you can do loads and loads of experimentation with. Then over here, these are Reeves gouache colors. Again, not an expensive set and they last for ages. I've had these paints for probably about two years now. I've done loads of artwork using them. But you don't need to be using gouache if you haven't got that on hand and you've just got some a watercolor set or, a, you know, aquarelle pans or whatever it might be. Anything that's just going to give you a nice kind of liquidic feel on the page. That's absolutely cool. You don't need to be using um, expensive materials, which these aren't. And uh, you certainly, you know, grab whatever you got lying around the house and let's just go crazy. Let's just put color on this page and see what happens. So without any further ado, I'm going to grab a little bit of orange, pop that in there. Some crimson. I want to go for a lot of warm color in this, in my, in the background here that we're going to be doing. Uh, cadmium yellow. And then I want to kind of bring a little bit of cool color in here as well. So I'm going to go with some emerald green and maybe a little bit of kind of a, what's that? Azo blue, azul blue. Oops. Come on, little guy. Ah. Okay, that 
paints a little bit on the thick side. I've definitely had this open a little bit too long. Nothing a little bit of water can't fix. And where's that emerald green? There we go. So I've got my couple of dollops, whoops, a little bit of mark on the page there, no worries. Okay, got my dollops of paint in, so I'm going to grab some water and just put a couple of good drops of water into each of these little pans here. Grab another little brush and just get these colors to mix into that water nicely. If you feel once you've added water to your source pigment, um, if you feel it's too light and washy, simply add a little bit more paint. If you feel it's too thick, too strong, just add more water. Easy peasy. Just give it a good mix to make sure all of that base pigment gets into the water and blends through nice and consistently. Oh, that crimson is beautiful. Look at that. Delish. So remember kind of whatever we're going to be doing or whatever you're doing as well, whatever paints you're using or pencils or Koki or marker, whatever you might be using for this particular process, just have fun with it, guys. Um, the, you know, the whole idea to kind of having a little bit of time every day just to kind of paint and schmush and have some fun is, you know, all you can do is you'll find that you kind of you, your mistakes are ultimately the things that you're going to learn from. I mean, here's a little Bob Ross and remember what he said. There are no mistakes, just happy accidents. A little quote that I love. Okay. So taking some of this water on my brush, I'm just going to apply a little bit to the page. Not too much. Oh, oops. Forgot to mention. Sorry. Even though this is pretty thick paper, it might, it's going to warp and buckle. Um, that's natural. Don't freak out if that happens. Um, I'm putting quite a lot of water on the background now, saturating areas of it so that when I apply my paint, um, it can kind of bleed and spread really nicely. Okay. So that's going on. Um, so as it buckles, a good idea is just to have a little binder clip, it's something you can just hold the paper down with. And that, that kind of keeps it fairly stretched out. So it's not going to kind of go completely crazy and wonky and go all over the place. Um, so just a, just a binder clip, um, will certainly kind of help keep things kind of level headed. Okay. So let's start with some strong crimson. Smash that in the corner there. Yeah. Look at that. Gorgeous. You can see this paper has got a slight kind of canvasy kind of texture. It is just regular paper. It's just got a little bit of a canvas weave to it, which um, gives some really kind of nice texture effect. So I've got no plan, no plan whatsoever here. I'm literally just kind of banging color together, putting it on the page, letting certain pigments and areas just kind of bleed into the next. Look at that. It's like a sea anemone. Beautiful. Just have fun with it. Put the color wherever you want. Give them little blocks, little kind of areas where they can kind of live on their own and they'll naturally blend into each other and kind of meet up with the guy next door. Uh, loving that crimson. Don't worry 
if you if you feel that the colors are kind of too bright and intense, that's nothing to kind of freak out about. Um, being gouache, even watercolor, as it dries, wow, look at that. As it dries, it naturally desaturates. Jeez. Man, a oh man, a oh man, loving this. So just popping that color in, going for a little bit of a hippie tie-dye thing here. Let's get that in there. It's really nice and hot up there, but I feel like I want to maybe just bring a little bit more heat into this section. So I'm going to grab a heavy amount of yellow, which I've just smushed some red into by mistake. And let's just plonk that in there and let it just, let it just run around the page. See where it wants to go. Oh, look at that. I mean, you've got your red meeting with the blue, giving some kind of lovely purple here. The green and the blue is doing something really cool. If there are any areas that you feel like you want to kind of um, just thin out a little bit, where you maybe feel that the textures or the color is a little bit too solid, just add water. Just felt that that orange was too hot, but I'm trying not to mix it in too much. I don't want it to go all muddy brown. Let's get a bit of orange. Okay, so what you can see happening here is the page is saturated. So it's naturally starting to buckle and do a kind of a, you know, collect little reservoirs of paint which you could leave to dry because that paint will disappear and only leave the pigment. But then you're going to have this pretty heavy kind of block there. Um, if you want that, cool, leave it. But if not, let's bang some of that in. All you do, grab a little bit of paper towel, tear the, tear the edge off so you get a nice kind of, um, kind of a coarse, coarse edge. Let's give it a bit of a scrunch and just gently place it in there and let it soak up some of that excess liquid. You can use a sponge, you can use whatever you got on hand. I just happen to have paper towel lying around, so that's what I'm popping in. Cool. And there's quite a big well of liquid going on there. Let me just suck some of that up. I'm actually going to lay it down on my page. I want to see if the paper towel texture might get picked up by the actual paint. If I just lightly tap it on, you see this paper towel's got almost um, a little bit of a kind of a circular embossing going on there. Look at the way that color's bleeding in. And then just very gently peel it off. I want to see if I can pick up that embossing again. The embossing of the actual paper towel. Um, let's see what happens if I just, whoopsie, pop some of that on here and really lightly just let the embossing touch the page. See if it won't pick up any kind of latent texture. Okay, just a quick one and then zook. Yeah, look at that. Some nice little bit of texture and interesting things happening there. Thank you, paper towel. Okay, so what's gonna happen now? I'm gonna leave this there. That's it, just a little bit of fun. I mean, gosh, what, what was that? Kind of 10, 15 minutes. Um, lovely kind of page that we're gonna, you know, areas of color that we're going to be putting our, transferring our sketch onto. And um, so the, the only thing now is leave this to dry 
And once this is dried, um, the page is going to still be pretty buckled. So a good kind of tip, quite simply, you just take the binder off once everything's nice and, you know, it's touch dry, close up your pad and stick a couple of heavy books or things on top of it. And it really doesn't take long. You can leave it for about kind of 15, 20 minutes, you know, gosh, quickly pick up the kids from school, do a load of washing, have a good coffee, um, <laughs> whatever it might be. Sorry, that's a slice of my life. Um, in those kind of 15 to 20 minutes. And when you come back, it'll be pressed, dry, and ready for the sketch. All right, see you shortly. So there we go. It's 15 or 20 minutes or so um, since we did this part. And now paper's nice and flat. I've had my heavy book on top. Um, the actual colors are nice and dry and it's looking really, really pretty. Really like that. So just a little bit of fun, a little bit of messing around. And look at that. Come on, that's beautiful. I'd love to see what you guys have done. Anyway, so again, coming back to our muse, Emma, a really beautiful uh, photograph here of her, which I've gone and previously done my sketch of. All right, so now what I want to do is to put a little bit of, so this is carbon paper or typewriter paper, transfer paper, whatever you call it, um, pop that over our background there, grab a little bit of tape just to hold it in place, just a little bit on top, and then we put our sketch over that, line it up nicely, another little bit of tape so it doesn't find its way around the page too much, and then pop that there. All right, so now we transfer. So if you are filing your sketches away, like I am, and you are um, using them to kind of transfer, to be able to experiment with different techniques all the time, when you transfer, it's always a good idea to maybe grab a colored pen, blue, green, or red, and do your transfer there so that you know the areas, you can see the areas you've gone over. If I go over this with pencil, it's going to be pretty tricky for me to kind of remember, okay, have I gone over this line already? Have I done that one? So what I'm going to do is just grab a black pen. The next time I, if I use the sketch again for anything, I'll pick a green pen or a red pen or whatever. So just change up the colors all the time, almost a kind of color code your way through the process that you do when you uh, transfer it so that you know more or less where your lines have been. Okay. So, so here we go. So I'm just pushing down fairly firmly and just starting to kind of trace in the areas, starting just with the hairline. Just going over with a kind of a fairly firm kind of stroke. And let's see how that's transferring. Let's just pull it back and peek under the page. There we go. Can you see that? Gorgeous, transferring nicely. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just transfer every little bit of line that I've got on here and um, just enjoy the process, enjoy the moment. It's also a great kind of time if there was any area that you weren't happy with when you did your original sketch, just change it up, put your line in a different place now. So this is great. This is fairly quick. It's fairly easy. Um, and it's a really kind of nice way to kind of preserve your original artwork. And at the same time, feel confident about the lines you're putting down. 
because you can use the sketch again and again and again and correct it along the way if there was any areas that you weren't happy with. Okay, so there we go. I've transferred everything. I can't see any little lines that I haven't gone over. Um, oof, let's hold our breath and see how it looks when we pull it back. Oh, oh man, sweet. Look at that. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So again, we bring our muse back. We have a look at this and I think that that's captured the outline really beautifully and with a lovely kind of strong kind of graphic quality. So the idea now is that all of this line um, is gonna effectively, we're gonna go over it again in black. You can do whatever you want. You can grab a bit of a black, um, uh, fine black pen and kind of do little bits of hatching. Um, but what I'd like to do is bring the gouache back and um, I'm going to put in some mid-tone and light-tone look at kind of, you know, I want to fill in certain areas of shadow with um, some kind of black-gray gouache. And then after that, I'm going to go over everything and put in the strong black graphic line and really kind of fill in all those little areas. So let's get ready for that. Right, so I've got my black gouache and let's put these guys aside. I'm just going to be working with a little bit of this now um, because I'm going to put just a dot of black there and another one here so I can create two tones, um, kind of a more washy, lighter black and then a darker, stronger one. Again, if you find your colors too harsh, too strong, just add water. I'll pop a lot more water into this one because I want this one to be a lot more transparent than that one there. Okay, so just a little bit of get some of that black in there. And now I'm gonna just look to see where kind of like really intense areas of shadow are and pop those in. So just letting my brush kind of find its way across the page. and covering in, uh, bringing in those kind of lovely, kind of deep, uh, these deeper textures. So I'm just filling in the, I'm working with the kind of, well, filling in the kind of the lighter areas. I'm not going for kind of intense kind of blacks at this point. Uh, you can see this is kind of like a bit of a kind of a grayish, feeling kind of coming through because it's always better when you're using kind of watercolors or gouache or whatever it might be you work from a very kind of a light color and you be, you go heavier you slowly build up those colors if you start off with very heavy colors it's tricky to kind of go back and correct your tonalities afterwards So just filling in now these kind of shadowy areas of her face. Not even worrying too much about these kind of these blue outlines. I actually quite like them. They're going to help create the very kind of graphic effect that I want the, the final artwork to, to have.
I'm even allowing the brush to kind of go beyond the lines as well. I'm not trying to be very strict about kind of coloring in uh, perfectly. Give your, let your piece have a little bit of personality by kind of breaking through some of the lines. Because when you're looking at the final thing, your eye will naturally um, kind of put it all together. If that makes any sense. <laughs> your eye will naturally kind of see the final composition. It's not going to matter too much if you've gone over um, or you've gone outside your line that you've created. So you can see, so very quickly, she starts getting some really nice kind of three-dimensional form. But it's really easy, guys. It's just a little bit of brush stroke, a little bit of little bit of paint. Working with these kind of very kind of light washes to start off with. And when you feel more confident, you can go in with the darker ones. And that really just You know, it's, it's, it's fun. It's easy. It's something you can do pretty quickly. I'd say the most kind of cumbersome, the most time consuming part of this whole process was probably doing the initial sketch. Cumbersome is the wrong word. Cause I mean, it was a lovely experience as well. Um, most challenging was probably doing the initial sketch. And the rest of it is really just kind of, I'm having fun. I'm just really kind of playing around. Focusing on the process, not the end result. I mean, look how nicely these tones, this little bit of black wash plays over the colorful background that we've already created. Going for a bit of a lighter feel down here, not putting too much pigment on the page. Getting in some of these richer shadow areas dotting a little bit more of my harder pigment in there. The chin area, I can just refine this a little bit by adding a little bit of water. Uh, there we go. Just blend that in. And then coming into the hair, we've got this kind of really dark, dark patch here. So I'm actually, which you could cover up with ink, but I'm going to cover that up with with my paint here. Coming together really nicely now. Just working around these kind of little fiery, flamey bits which indicate my highlights. Even though they might not be evident in the photograph, it's nice just to accent a few particular areas um, just to make your artwork a little bit more interesting. So I've got these kind of like flamey bits happening in there. that just give a feeling of movement and uh, shape and structure to the hair. Get this neck shadow line in. Skadoosh. And then
just roughly popping in some of these uh, creases and folds. So again, as you work, because we're working with gouache, um, it tends to get sucked up into the page. So the pigment looks really strong when you're popping it on. I want to put a big bold stroke here on this bit of hair. Uh, so the pigment looks really strong, um, but then once you've once it's had a chance to dry and actually get sucked up into the page, it does become, you can see it's really kind of dark down here, but where we went previously, it's quite light, quite light and delicate. So it's the kind of paint that you can layer and layer and layer as much as you feel necessary if you want to do that. It's just a bit of shadow happening in the hair up here. I just want to capture that. See, I'm not trying to be super neat. I'm just kind of almost kind of blobbing the color on and letting a little bit of water drops just naturally allow the, the paint and the pigment to find its own way around the page. It's just going to make things a little bit more interesting. I want to capture some shadow in here with a hair that's by the ear. Okay, and now if you want to go over any areas where you've been before, I'm going to go with my slightly darker bit of paint there. I want to bring some added depth up here. Once you've got a line of water, um, or a bit of a line of liquid with gouache, you can literally just tip put the tip of your brush into your paint and then just kind of dot along the area that you've just put your liquid on. And you see that it kind of just stays within the meniscus of the, of the actual drops. So that forms a very kind of clear, succinct shape. It doesn't just kind of bleed all over the place. Let's get some little bit of extra definition on the eyebrows. Pop some of that color in. Don't want the eyebrows to feel too flat because remember, we're still going to go over a lot of the area with ink. This We're using this bit of gouache now just to give everything a lovely kind of painterly texture that'll work well with the ink. I'm just talking about the brush that I'm that I'm using. It's nothing fancy. It's a pretty inexpensive, all-purpose pointed pointed brush. Very kind of soft bristle, so it absorbs a lot of liquid from your pan. Um, so again, you don't need to go out and spend a fortune on an expensive set of brushes or a specific kind of watercolor. You know, watercolor brushes, if you've got them, great. If you don't, seriously, not the end of the world. I'm making do with what I had lying around my little, lying around my desk. I want to flick in a bit of the eyebrow, oh, sorry, eyelash, which I'll refine when I get to my ink. Just very lightly, just push down, lift, push down, lift. So I want to kind of put those colors together there because looking at her eyelid, there's quite a nice intense kind of shadow coming through, which I want to capture with the paint. So once I get to the ink, that'll be quite a hard line. Let's go back to the nostril, fill this one in. The inside of the mouth is just going to kind of be quite a dark color.
and then just this lower line of the top lip just to give a little bit of definition there And we've got some shadow on the cheekbone here. I just want to pop that in. And that comes around. And then underneath the bottom lip, there's a stronger shadow I need to capture. Just want to go back and darken up the heavier areas here. So I'm just going to be quite generous with the amount of paint that I'm putting in. This very kind of fine tip brush is great for being able to kind of push the paint into little kind of uh, little corners and more kind of will help you work around more geometric shapes. This is really nice. It's almost giving a calligraphy kind of style quality to, to the portrait. It's a real nice exploration of kind of intense shadows and lighter areas. And because you've done so much work in the background, you really don't need to over, overwork the actual portrait that you're doing now because you want as much of that beautiful kind of background to kind of come through. Capture some of that hair clip. A little bit of rough shadowing going on in there. And one or two extra little strokes of shadow for the hair. So I'm literally just very gently popping in color well, tone rather, where I feel it needs it the most. And if I went too heavy, like I did there, I just pop a little bit of water on the brush and just, there we go, just move some of that pigment around. Just taking a look, taking a second to think about what to do next, if it needs anything more at this stage. But I don't want to overwork it, which is always the temptation. I do tend to do that. Eek. So I'm going to force myself to drop the brush, leave it there, let that dry. Um, honestly, that's going to take maybe kind of five minutes to really just get sucked into the page and dry nicely. And then we can do the final thing where we're just going to grab a pen um, and then just go over our line and uh, finish it up with this little bit of ink here. And then we'll have our super graphic portrait almost done. Okay, so that's nice and dry now and looking pretty good. So we can move the paints aside and bring out the pen. And so try and use a gel pen as opposed to a ballpoint. Um, the liquid ink will just kind of work much better on the page, especially on the bit of grain that the, um, the paint has created. So um, all I'm going to do now is literally 
start going over the lines where we see that carbon paper that came through the key lines rather kind of, you know, so I'm just focusing on, I'm not doing going to fill in all these lines that were the tonal accents. I'm just putting in the main kind of graphic, uh, the main, the core lines of the portrait. So it's popping around the nose. Okay. Let's do a little bit of work here. Just a kind of a hatch for that eyebrow and then pop in these gorgeous eyelashes. I'm just going back and referring all the time to the actual um, Muse image, just to make sure I've got my kind of shapes right. Just kind of loosely indicating dark areas at this stage so that if I overwork something, you know, it's difficult to go back to. But if I'm kind of keeping my line fairly loose, it's easy enough for me to kind of go in and full, you know, broaden out particular areas if I know that my marks are kind of in the right place. Let's just get these eyes looking great. Let's get these eyelashes in with little flicks of the pen. You know, again, I'm not worrying too much about whether I'm covering up over the, uh, the transfer paper exactly. I'm just kind of flicking things on because everything that's here already on the page is helping with that very kind of beautiful, bold graphic feel. So what I'm really doing now is just accenting the darker, darker areas. And if I feel the need to, I can always kind of go back um, and just keep working with a, with a pen popping in more. more kind of graphic areas as I need to. So as I'm filling in the eyebrow, I'm just doing lots of little kind of flick lines, um, working, making sure I'm not kind of making kind of one big blip, solid black bit of ink, coloring it in. I'm just, I want to kind of have that little bit of hair in the eyebrow feeling natural. So I'm just flicking, flicking my pen across these spaces and changing the density of the, um, you know, where the actual nib is going. So some areas I'm kind of deliberately not filling it in too much. Others I am, and it just helps to give that, that body and shadow that bit of substance. If you kind of just kind of, uh, makes it feel more natural. Otherwise it's going to feel just like a big kind of heavy clunky, bit of black. Okay, so let's look at the hair. Let's go over these lines. Almost again, I'm just giving it a sketchy feel. I'm very kind of quickly and loosely going over, going over all the kind of key areas and even filling in little bits of hairline and follicle where I feel the need to, just to kind of loosen things up a little bit. But you can do whatever you want. You know, this is your picture. This is your portrait to do with as you wish. But you can see the combination of all these different kind of techniques that we've been putting down here is already rewarding us with a beautiful dimensional image of Emma. See, I actually quite like some of the blue of the original carbon paper that's come through. So I'm not going to try and cover up everything. It's kind of working quite nicely to have the black ink, the paint, and that little bit of blue coming through. 
So I'm not going to be heavy handed and go over everything with the black. Just going to kind of let, just let the sketch naturally evolve. So I'm just going over kind of key areas. And again, where I feel like I want to see a little bit more kind of hair definition, just flicking in some directional strokes, giving her that little bit of extra movement. Okay, what's happening now is that my nib is picking up a lot of the actual um, paint. So every now and again, you're going to see I'm just going to roughly kind of re-energize my nib by, you can just take the corner of a, just a normal piece of paper and just kind of cush it around a little bit, just to let that ink flow back, uh, flow properly through into the nib. It's almost as if the paint itself, the what's, what's gone on the page actually sucks the nib dry. Okay, I'm going to just park that for now. I don't want to start overworking the hair. I tend to bounce around a lot. I'm going to go back to the kind of the nose and the mouth area now. Um, because I want to, I can, whatever I do here, in terms of intensity of kind of detail, I can balance it out with what's going on here, there as well. So let's just fill in again, the darker areas or the more kind of areas of detail, like we've got our nose ring here coming into the nostril. Give that a bit of extra pen work. I mean, you can use your pen to literally just define, define key areas and um, darken out, you know, particular kind of shadow, deep kind of shadow tones. Um, Again, I'm kind of keeping a very kind of a loose kind of mark here. I really just want to use my, the black of the ink to just accent different points. So I'm kind of almost kind of a hatch stroking at the moment, different areas of, of tonal detail. Okay. Coming over to the ear and I just want to capture her earrings, define those, and then popping back the side to this side, I'm just going to put a bit more detail into the hair. Just let your pen kind of travel, let it, let it do its thing. Little bits here, a little bit there, as opposed to kind of overworking, you know, deeply working into one particular area will help you um, avoid kind of overworking your sketch. You're just putting in little bits of detail in certain places. And as the sketch grows and develops, or the painting or the portrait, what are we doing? How would you define this? Is it a sketch? Ah. I wouldn't even know. Mixed media, I guess. Um, anyway, so kind of as it grows and evolves with every kind of stroke that you put down, you'll kind of naturally feel like uh, where it needs a little bit more work. It almost kind of like the sketch itself will start telling you, hey, I need another little stroke here. I want to kind of just accent this or see a little bit more of that. I'm putting in a bit of shadow around here because I want this bit of hair to stand out in the foreground. I want it to feel more dimensional. So I'm just kind of scribbling in a little bit of shadow, hatching in that little bit there. Okay. I want to come down and look at some of those neckline follicles because they're quite defining. So I'm just flicking over those. And let's 
before I kind of go back into the neck area, I want to just see what happens if I define her clothing a little bit better. I'm not going all the way down because I've got quite a heavy stroke going on there and a really kind of intense background color. I'm just darkening up the top sections. See, there's a kind of little bit of shadow, whoopsie, a little bit of shadow kind of happening in a triangle there. Just want to fill that guy in and pop it in there. There we go. See, those creases are getting some natural kind of dimension and definition now. These kind of darky kind of black areas here that I'm popping in balance out nicely with the kind of darker, more intense ones that are happening up there as well. See, there's a temptation that I have to really kind of go heavy handed black and <laughs> fill that area in. Sorry for the sound effects. It's just kind of how I work. Um, but I'm not going to, I really like the kind of painterly effect. Um, so instead of overworking it, I'm actually just going to just go back and just fill in a few kind of follicle areas. Put a couple of nice kind of little marks on the page that just give you that nice kind of sketchy painterly effect. Um, Just want to fix the eye a little bit here. It feels like it just needs a little bit more definition. Yep, there. And come around to this side of the eye here. A little bit of definition there. That closes that off nicely. And let's see, I just want to bring in a few kind of hatch strokes just to knock back this intense yellow here. So I'm just very lightly just doing some quick vertical, vertical marks. Feels like she wants it there as well, just to match a shadow line. Let's smooth out that curve. A little bit more hatch here. leave that balance that hatch bring a bit of hatching in on the cheekbone shadow and perhaps I want to capture some of that kind of vertical hatching uh, balance that out and I'm just going to put a little bit in the hair up here just a little bit to define some of that shadow and shape in the hairline. Hmm. So th this is the moment where I kind of look at something and I go, well, do I want to keep working? How much more does it need? But you know what? For now, I'd say that's pretty successful. Yes, I could carry on. You can carry on as well. Experiment, have fun, grab your pen. Gosh, if you've got it lying around, grab some charcoal even and kind of play with your sketch. Again, the whole point to this little exercise of arting every day is to just have fun with it and experiment so that you can actually grow as an artist, grow your creativity and not feel restricted by trying too hard to copy a particular style and defining your success on whether you've managed to kind of copy something perfectly or create the world's most amazing sketch every single day. You don't need to. This is for your soul. This is for your creativity. This is good fun. And I'm popping the pen down. I'm really happy with that. I hope this has been, um, you know, there's been some kind of uh, good stuff that you've got out of this. And hmm, I'm calling it a day. That's that for that. Done.